Google stock. It has been a good day. It's been a fairly advantageous day for Google shareholders. And let me show you why. Because today, we're up 2.84%. Five day returns, actually, of 2.47%. So despite the market continuing to fall apart, continuing to decline day over day over day, in line with the market more broadly today, Google's seen a rebound. It doesn't make up for the losses we've, we've continued to experience over the past one month, down 8.43%. Six month returns, negative 21.83%. Year to date, down 19.96%. But it does signal something that I've been saying for a while. Yes, when a rebound does come, when we do get that euphoric uptick that obviously comes after the pain we've been having in the marketplace, Google will not be the first one to rebound. It will not see massive, massive appreciation of value quickly. But what it will see is steady appreciation over time. Consistent build-up of value. And because, because on a fundamental level, this company is unmatched. In terms of its prolific consistency, the depth and breadth of its economic moat, this company is unrivaled in terms of its financial stability. A cash-to-debt ratio of 4.71. A massive, massive amount of cash on hand relative to debt. So much cash on hand that they could almost pay down all the debt obligations five times over and then still have operational free cash flow flowing into their business, allow them to reinvest, build out, make opportunistic acquisitions, and continue to compound going forward. This company, in terms of financial stability, underlying quality, is unmatched. Nothing is quite like Google. And it's not only that cash-to-debt ratio, but also the equity to assets. Equity to assets of 0.71. And for a company of this scale, for a $1.5 trillion company, those type of numbers, that type of numeric output, it's almost unseen. Absolutely ridiculous. And is reflected in that Altman score. An Altman score of 11.39. Ask yourself, in this type of doubtful environment, in this type of fear-laden market environment, potentially the worst market we've seen since 2008, what type of company do you want to own? What type of, not in terms of stock, but underlying business do you actually want to own? I would want to own a company that people are going to continue to use irrespective of whether there is a recession or not. Irrespective of how the market and economic environment shifts and changes, people still use the product. And that is the absolute reality with Google. Are people going to stop using Google because there's a recession? I don't think so. Yes, there may be more or less advertising from the advertisers on the platform, on YouTube, on Google search, whatever. But over long term, as economic conditions get better over time, those users come back. Those advertisers come back whilst that user base continues to grow and compound over time. So not only can this company endure a downturn, but it also can come out swinging after a recession. This is the company. This is the company to hold. I've seen individual investors who own nothing but index funds, who own nothing but the VWO and SPY and, and index funds like that, and then Google stock. And that's all they own. Google stock and index funds. If that is not indicative of the underlying quality and conviction associated with this company, then I don't know what is. Tremendous degree of financial strength, evident, and extremely high quality business. And it's not only the financial strength in this marketplace, not only the financial strength correlated with that uptick on the day, but also, also that profitability. Net margins of 27.57%. Historically, Yes, they have seen a decline. Last quarter, they were around 29.51%, historically the highest they'd ever achieved. So we have seen a little bit of variability in terms of net margins. Is that really a concern? When you're a $1.5 trillion company and you see a 2% decline in net margins, I'm not freaking out. As a shareholder myself, I'm not freaking out about that in terms of numbers. Operating margins, net margins, they are still almost at the pinnacle of what they have been historically for the company. And yes, we have seen gross margin declines. Gross margins, both on an industry basis and historically, aren't as high as they have been. But think about that. This is a company that's been scaling up rapidly over the past few years. Naturally, we're going to see gross margin declines. As the business scales up, gets larger and larger and larger, more capital costs, naturally, lower gross margins associated with the firm. But a tremendous amount of those gross margins are still accreting net margins. In fact, the most net margin accretion we have ever had in this company. So... I'm not too concerned. I see a scaling up business, I see a, a growing business still retaining a great degree of net margin profitability. And so my concerns are very modest. Returns on equity. Returns on equity, though, absolutely stands out. Returns on equity of 
30.6%. This number is not only indicative of the underlying quality of Google's business, a very low capital cost business. Think about Google's business. They're running ads on their platform. Once that platform is established, once YouTube or the, the Google search platform is established, what are the marginal costs associated with running an additional ad? The answer is virtually zero. Of course, there's server costs, ongoing capital costs, staffing costs, stuff like that for Google. But in association with mar marginal costs tied to individual ads, virtually zero. And that means strong net margin accretion. It means high returns on e equity and returns on assets. A strong underlying business model. And it is reinforced by the degree of managerial competency at the helm of Google. Sundar Pichai, Ruth Borat, these world-class leaders leading this company, not only through treacherous economic environments, but also allowing it to thrive in good times. Look at how much growth has been perpetuating for Google over the past few years. Massive, massive growth in a company that a lot of people were saying was done, that it was finished. It wasn't going to grow anymore, and yet it continues to compound. It continues to build up over time. All these numbers are indicative of that. Massive degree of financial strength, massive degree of underlying profitability. Everything here is simply world class. And you may be saying, obviously, Lockie, Everyone knows Google's good business. Everyone knows Google's a fantastic company. What about that valuation? We've seen this company continue to outperform. Obviously, it must be overvalued right now, right? So all the analysts are following it, all the investors are following it. How could it possibly be undervalued? Well, let me tell you something. When you're operating in a marketplace with doubt, with fear, with anxiety around every corner, even the highest quality of companies, companies like Google, can become undervalued. Let me show you. A PE ratio currently for Google of 21.01 and a forward PE of 20.39. Absolutely fantastic. These PEs, relative to the growth rates taking place within Google, a three-year revenue growth rate of 25%, a three-year EBITDA growth rate of 34.6%, the low nature of those PEs creates a massive differential between the growth being priced in this company and the growth that's actually taking place. So let me show you. If we come down here and we actually have a look at the tangible growth rates perpetuating Within Google, we get a very clear case. Over the past 10 years, a growth rate of 19% on an earnings per share basis, five-year earnings per share growth of 35.5%, and a one-year earnings per share growth rate of 47.2%. So massive growth proliferating for this company. And despite that, despite the high and consistent nature of these growth rates, you are still having a fairly low degree of growth priced in. In fact, based upon the current trading price today, all you need to price in is around 11.41% growth and you get a fair value price target for this company. You get a fair value price target for this business even with the most conservative of growth rates going forward. But what if you got a bit more bullish? What if you thought, listen, given the secular trends around Google, given the potential for growth going forward, not only within the core ads business, but also in terms of YouTube, also in terms of Waymo, Google Cloud, and the other various other bets they have going on, I think growth can be far higher than 11.14%. In fact, I think growth around 17% you know, going forward over the next decade, still lower than their 10-year, 5-year, and 1-year growth rates. I don't think that's unreasonable. And with a 17% growth rate going forward over the next decade, 9% discount rate, current earnings per share of $110 a share, look at that price target. A price target of $3,415.92. It is absolutely exceptional. The degree of undervaluation in this company right now, a margin of safety of 32%, is what you would associate with a more speculative stock. You look at Palantir, and you run a DCF on Palantir right now, this is the same degree of undervaluation that you get on a speculative equity like that. And yet, Google, despite retaining an immensely stronger degree of financially stronger financial stability, an immensely stronger degree of financial profitability and managerial competency, it is still just as undervalued. This is the product of market irrationality. This is the product of doubt and fear proliferating throughout the marketplace. These opportunities don't come along every day. They don't come along every month, every year. They are very rare. And so when they come along, they need to be taken. Of course, before you make any moves, conduct your own research, look into the business, make sure you understand all these fundamental characteristics, the profitability, the financial strength, the valuation relative to the growth taking place. But if you enjoyed this video, if I'll give some insight into my thoughts on Google relative to the market more broadly, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you have not already. 
If there's a company or a topic or some other area of stock market you want me to explore in a future video, then please comment down below. would love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.